Hey guys, CZ here. Uh, well, today um, I am going to <clears throat> commemorate the 30th time that I will be reusing my USO5 yeast. Okay, um, so I'm going to brew a beer in commemoration of that. This is going to be the last time that I reuse my yeast. I think 30 is a nice round number. Um, anyway, um, <clears throat> I am going to call it the Batch 30 IPA and so basically it's going to be a 45 litre batch um, hopefully and it's going to be two cans of Cooper's Pale Ale and do a kilo of light drama extract, brew enhancer 2 um, and we're going to do a kilo of dextrose, I know that seems like a lot but let's not forget it's 45, 45 uh, litres um, and I'm just wanting to mix it up a bit. There's a few hops here I haven't used before, so I just really want to have a little bit of fun. So basically, we're going to have um, Enigma, which is going to be really helping with the bittering. Thank you, Vic, for sending that. Um, but I think it originated from Taz. <laughs> so thanks to both of those guys. Um, I'm going to be using some Amarillo. Um, there's going to be Simcoe, which I haven't used before. Um, and also Centennial. So, should be good. Now, another thing which might be a hot tip for you guys, I'm not sure if you know about it, but um, I've started to steep some grains again. This time, I decided to do it slightly different. So instead of steeping the grains on the, um, on, uh, on the pot, or in the pot, I should say, I've decided to do it another way, which is actually a really clever way of doing it. So the day before brew day, you get your grains, crack them, this is dark crystal, and you cold steep them in the fridge overnight. Then what you do is you strain them into the brew pot, okay, and you boil it up. Um... So there you go. It's pretty straightforward. It's a nice way of doing it. You extract, I mean, these. this is a specialty malt, so the sugars are already there. Um, you've got the flavor already there. Um, you, you know, it, you don't have to convert anything. That's all done for you. Um, Cuning process is all done. Everything's done. So basically, that makes it a lot more easier. If you can do it the night before, then all you do is you bring it out into your brew dungeon or whatever, and then you're going to be boiling your wort anyway. So mine's going to be boiling. I'm going to be doing a 20-minute boil instead of a 15-minute boil. Anyway, guys, you don't need to see me strain this in. That's pretty straightforward. I've got the heat on at the moment. Okay. And uh, I'm going to strain this in now. And then I'm going to add the light dromod extract. You know, I'm going to be doing about 500 grams of light dromod extract because this has got some sugars in it too. All right, so... Um, see you soon. Hey guys, so I just wanted to clarify. Um, originally, I accounted for this to be um, an 8 litre boil. Now, this is a 19 litre brew pot. So, as you can see, that is definitely not 8 litres. It's probably more like 10 or 11. Probably more like 11, to be perfectly honest. Maybe even edging close to 12. So that's going to increase my IBUs. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to let this boil without the lid on, obviously, so some of that stuff is going to evaporate, which will bring the boil volume down slightly over time. Um, but what I'm going to do, guys, because you are adding cold, steep grains, so they're cold overnight, into a boiling mixture, uh, into a brew pot, sorry, what you need to do is you need to boil it in order to kill some of the nasties and bacteria that might be present in the cold steep mixture. So what I'm doing, this was originally going to be a 20 minute boil, I've increased the boil to 30 minutes. So when I start the clock, this will be boiling for 10 minutes first, then at the 20 minute mark, I'll obviously be doing the, um, <clears throat> I'll be doing uh, the uh, hop additions, <clears throat> hop additions. So, okay. Um, I'll see you when the boil starts guys, cheers. Alright, as you can see guys, the boil has just started. Alright, so I'm going to start the 30 minutes. The boil volume has reduced slightly, so that's good. And 
I'll see you at 20 minutes. Alright guys, it's the 20 minute mark. 45 grams of Enigma. Here we go. Alright guys, 15 minute mark. One full wolf lock tablet. Alright guys, it's the 10 minute mark. 40 grams of Amarillo. Hey guys, 5 minute mark. 5 minute mark, we have 40 grams of Simcoe. Wow. Does that smell good? Alright guys, it's flame out. So, now we have 30 grams of Simcoe and 30 grams of Centennial. Alright, mix that around. Sorry if the lighting isn't that good. Maybe I should have put the uh, flash on. Anyway, um, so there we go. Now guys, you don't really need to see the rest. Basically, what I'm going to do now is I am going to add the 500 grams of light drama extract, brew enhancer 2 and a kilo of dextrose. I'm going to cool it down a little bit, I'm going to add these two tins and then basically I'm going to be filling it up to uh, 45 litres. Now I've basically changed the recipe a little bit as I've gone along um, so I will have to do a final. I uh, will have to do an original gravity, um, and I will have to punch in the numbers into the spreadsheet to work out what the uh, what the IBUs are and all that kind of stuff. But you guys will know that because in a few seconds you'll uh, probably see the uh, tasting video. But the other thing I want to say is that I'm going to be dry hopping as well. So, but I'll let you know in a second what the uh, well in a. Yeah, in a few sec in a few seconds, what the dry hop schedule is going to be like. Cheers, cheers, guys. G'day, guys. So it is day five of primary fermentation, and here I'm going to dry hop in my stainless steel little ball here. I dry hop the uh, batch thirty IPA with um, eighteen grams of Centennial, seventeen grams of Amarillo, and eighteen grams of Simcoe. Okay, now um, just to let you know that um, I've had some hot days here in South Australia and uh, I found it really hard to get the temperature down. When I pitched it, it was okay, um, but uh, getting the temperature down was quite hard. So fermentation is, even on day five, it is, it's getting close to almost done. G'day guys, here we go. This is the uh, tasting. Um, this is my batch 30 IPA. I'm actually on my second keg of it, so... Pardon me. Um, it looks pretty hazy, but it's actually not that bad. You guys can actually see that. Um, there you go. So it's actually quite quite clear. You guys can see the LEDs. It's just it's it's a really rich kind of colour. Anyway, um, as uh, you guys can remember from a few seconds ago, um, I said that there were a few hot spells. Um, uh, and it finished fermenting fairly quickly. I was a little bit concerned about that because I didn't want any off flavors, but my yeast can take high temperatures, um, so this was a nice little test for it considering it was the last one, um, the 30th batch, in fact. So, yeah, and also when you have a lot of extra hops, especially when you dry hop uh, in, a, in a beer, sometimes the uh, hops can actually mask a, bit, uh, a certain amount of off flavors. Anyway... There were no off flavors in this whatsoever. Um, the first keg was really good, but the bitterness was quite high. Um, still very enjoyable, but uh, you know, it, 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 I wasn't quite sure what to make of it. Um, but when the first keg almost bottomed out, 
it mellowed out really, really nice, and I'm getting a lot more flavors, like a lot more flavors coming through. I even tried one of my bottled ones, and that was divine. It was so good. So as you can see there, batch 30 IPA. It's about 5%. Um, time reuse yeast 30, so quite happy with that. Um, we'll give it a nose. Um, I'm getting some pininess, getting um, stone fruits, like a hint of pineapple maybe, um, a little bit of peach. Um, it's just really, really good. Give it a taste. 17. Ah. Oh yeah, that's good. It's really good. Seriously, guys, I, I just threw this together. I mean, so to speak. I took a little bit of time to do my spreadsheet and all that, but um, I just thought, look, you know, I think these hops are going to balance out really, really well. And, oh, my gosh, those two pale ale kits, beautiful balance with malt when you throw in a heck of a lot of hops, even like dry hopping as well, beautiful balance. But because it was a 45-litre batch and I had the decks in there as well, it made it not as thick. It cut through, you know. It cut through the beer, made it a little bit thinner, which is kind of well. It's what you want in an IPA. You don't want an IPA too thick, because in my opinion, you know, the hops don't balance out that well with the malt. When the malt is too malt heavy, you you almost feel like the hops are trying to punch through the cap of malt to try and get onto your palate. I'm really liking this beer. I'm really liking it, and uh, you know, once it um, once the keg's done, it's done. But uh, I just wanted to celebrate and commemorate the thirtieth time I have reused my yeast, and I am absolutely stoked that this beer was the beer that I chose, the recipe that I chose. So, cheers, guys. Have a have a crack at the beer yourself, and yeah, reuse your yeast. G'day guys, how you going? Just thought I'd show you a little bit more clarity. There you go. The keg is about to kick. Look how clear that is. Beautiful. Smells gorgeous and tastes even better. Cheers guys, 17. G'day guys, please like, subscribe and share if you like, and uh, yeah, stay easy.